trees were here when the first men came. They're here today, but a bunion, a bunion. Trees were here when the first men came. They're here today, but a bunny, a new Paul Bunyan, a new Paul Bunyan in the wood. We grow new trees and we use them all. We want them straight and we want them tall. There's a new Paul Bunyan, a new Paul Bunyan, a new Paul Bunyan in the wood. Hundreds of years ago, men first came to these shores. Men who knew they were standing on the threshold of a new world. There in front of them was the forest, the vast and unknown wilderness. What did they see, those early pioneers? Security? There was no security. But there was opportunity as big as the continent. There was hope and freedom. What were their thoughts as they looked at the waiting forest? The early sea captains saw ship timbers, a new mast. But the pioneers saw something else. Out of these trees, they could build homes. Once the land was cleared, they could raise food. So the story of the United States began with this sound, the sound of the axe. History tells us that lumbering became our first industry. Out of sweat and courage and quit, they were building America. The plow of the farmers followed the flashing axe of the woodsmen. Then began the rolling, pioneering marching of home-seeking, land-hungry, free people. No man told them where to go, what to do, how to worship. On they went, and always just ahead of them, just over the next rise, was the sound of history. Some of the great spirit of their enterprise lives on in the giant figure of Paul Bunyan, legendary symbol of America's first industry. Many and fabulous are the stories about old Paul. He looked to the north. His double-bitted axe glittered against the sky. And then, where once there had been a trackless wilderness, now sprang up the farms and villages of New England. Paul Bunyan turned to the south. Again, the great axe left his shoulder. And out of the wilderness came Virginia, the Carolinas, and all the great south. Paul looked to the west, toward the setting sun. Again, with every westward stride, every swing of the axe, came a harvest of forest products. And in Paul Bunyan's footsteps, up grew a thriving new nation. With a great sigh that echoed from the mountains, old Paul finally reached the Pacific. The long trek was over. Out of the wilderness, Paul Bunyan had built a new world. But already, old Paul was fading into legend. It was time for a new era, time for a new Paul Bunyan. It was time for men to look thoughtfully at our forest. Fortunately for us, timber is a renewable resource. Trees are living things, and they reproduce themselves. Trees grow, and while they're growing, they must be protected. So many things can happen to trees, like people. They grow old, they get sick, or become so weak they fall before the wind. Once down, they're useless to man. They lie rotting and bug infested, cluttering up the forest floor. Trees have many enemies. You see, the health and growth of a tree depends on the cambium layer just inside the bark. Beetles get in and make little tunnels which cut the lifeline and kill the tree. Tree enemies, like insects or tree diseases, are studied on plots like this.
This sign reminds us of another enemy, a devastating enemy, fire. Everybody loses when a forest burns, and repeated fires can kill the land. Carefully, the forests are mapped, and vast sums of money are spent on a system of protection and dependable production. Highways and fire lanes are built, spreading out in all directions. Both private and public agencies cooperate in the endless struggle to find better ways to protect our growing trees. To locate fires once they get started, the new Paul Bunyan builds lookout towers at strategic spots and installs a system of fast reporting. Modern equipment is ready day or night to handle the next emergency. After some fires, nature does a wonderful job of reseeding. But if nature can't help, the new Paul Bunyan turns to his nurseries. Here, seedlings are grown by the millions. It's slow and expensive, but sometimes the only way to reforest idle land. Teams of men go out with their mattocks. Carefully they dig and plant the healthy youngsters. Reforested land, covered with second growth and shrubs, creates ideal conditions for all game. Sportsmen and lumbermen work together because good forest management creates a paradise for hunters and fishermen. Harvesting timber is so much like growing any other crop that the lumberman has become a tree farmer. When you see signs like this, you know the land behind the sign has been dedicated to the permanent production of forest crops. It takes so long to grow trees that the tree farmer often plans for harvests that he won't live to see. Old Paul didn't worry about growing new trees. He left that for Mother Nature. But the new Paul Bunyan knows that trees are one of civilization's most important materials. He thinks of timber as a crop. He works closely with nature, plans for the necessary protection, plans to keep the successive crops coming along. He knows that some trees, like these Douglas firs, grow in dense stands of about the same age. The best system of harvesting here is called area selection. The result, at first glance, looks like a patchwork of cut and uncut areas. But near each cutover piece, there is always a carefully selected block of trees left in a place where they will throw seed onto the harvested areas. Nature will supply the winds, the birds and animals to distribute the precious seeds to start another crop of trees growing up in the sun-bathed cutover area. Where trees grow in even stands, area selection works well. But the problem is different in a pine forest, for instance, where trees of all sizes and ages are mixed together. Here, the new Paul Bunyan becomes selective. He picks out mature trees for harvest, a few to an acre, and leaves many behind, leaves them to grow and protect them. Given proper protection, it takes 25 to 50 years to grow a harvest of pulp, poles, and piling. The new Paul Bunyan works in these long, long cycles. He uses both natural and artificial reseeding to keep growing and harvesting trees, thereby assuring for future generations an adequate supply of forest products. But growing and protecting trees is only a of what the new Paul Bunyan is doing. Here's a private logging road. Let's go along and see what's new in harvesting. The new Paul Bunyan is determined not only to keep growing trees, but when it's time to harvest, he is equally determined to harvest the whole crop. 
this is a pre-logging operation. And the point is, if these trees weren't removed now, they might be damaged or wasted during the main harvest. Chokers are fastened around the logs, and strong cables snake them into the landing. They're loaded on specially built trucks and driven to a nearby private railroad. All these logs would have been discarded and left behind in the old days. And here's modern ingenuity at work. A whole truckload of logs lifted up and over in one unit and then lowered onto the waiting railroad car. But this is only pre-logging. Now we're ready for the major harvest. We've come a long way from the logging methods of yesterday. Even the saws are mechanized. But there's still a thrill when the faller cries. Bigger log loads call for bigger equipment, more power, more ability to maneuver. Today, the woods resound with the voices of modern machinery, great tractors and much specially built equipment. And watch how easily they handle it. Before we leave these harvesting operations, look over there at that ridge. While the new Paul is harvesting the whole crop, he hasn't forgotten the importance of growing new trees. All that timber up there was left as a seed block to throw seeds down here, so that the whole cycle of growth and harvest will start over again. Meantime, another long train load of saw logs moves down from the woods. Thousands of miles of truck and railroads lick the tree farms and the mill.
this is how they come to the mill. Many different species, different sizes, different grades, arriving every day from the woods. They're all dumped into the pond together, and the problem is how to use all of each log. How to get the greatest degree of use from every one. Here comes the boom boat. Squat and powerful, this boat starts them moving. Begins the job of songs. Down there, closer to the mills, boom men go to work with their pike poles, sorting out the various cheese, grades, and sizes, floating them. Each pocket leads to a plant which has been especially designed to get the molecular cotton size of log. Some are better for lumber, some for pulp, some for plywood. Others will go into the more than 4,000 forest products which are made from wood. A bull chain brings up the big logs. Try to look at them through the eyes of the new Paul Bunyan. How can we use all of the log? What can we do, for example, with the bark? How to remove it? This is solved by blasting the bark off with water power. 1,300 pounds of pressure to the square inch. Free, clean to handle logs, move into the sawmill. Formerly, as much as 20% of the logs could not be used. Now, men plan to use everything. The bark, the slabs and edges, all the sawmilling leftovers. The major product of our forest is still lumber, manufactured in thousands of mills all over America. But just outside the lumber mill is an elaborate conveyor system moving the leftovers toward new processing plants. You are looking at the raw material for new products. Hydraulically debarked logs can be processed much more efficiently into pulp and paper. As a result, 18% more of the wood in each pulp log is recovered. Chipping is the first step. Whole logs are reduced to chips by enormous razor-sharp knives. It's all done in a matter of seconds. chips of exactly the right size on their way to the pulp mill to be made into prime quality paper making fiber.
Now let's look at another example of modern utilization of the Horace crop. These specially selected logs are brought over here to be peeled and made into plywood. The bark is removed dry by this specially designed debarker. The logs are literally peeled down to a continuous ribbon of wood. Cut to proper size, the sheets are glued together and the dry bark, after being processed in a nearby plant, has become an ingredient for glue used to bind the sheets into strong plywood panels. Wherever you look, you'll see this kind of complete utilization. Out of that planing mill come dry shavings. Once they would have been burned. Today they are blown over to a byproduct plant where under 160 pounds of pressure, they are formed into eight pound presto logs for use in fireplaces and furnaces, and into smaller sizes for use in stokers. Everything that can be used will be. The dry bark of fir trees, once burned, is now scientifically processed and marketed under the name of Silvicon. Silvicon is used in the manufacture of flooring materials, plastics, rubber products, and a variety of other items essential to modern Meantime, from the clean, sound trimmings of Douglas fir comes the raw material for a wood fiber product, Silvacell. Because of its toughness and resiliency, Silvacell finds a wide usage, ranging from oil well drilling to a highly efficient type of home insulation. Overland shipments are loaded on trucks or trains from giant storage sheds. Just beyond is the dock, large enough for deep water vessels to take on their cargoes. The new Paul Bunyan plans his mill sites to use the whole of each new harvest. This means he must manage his tree farm so growth and harvest will be in balance, thus assuring a perpetual supply of raw materials for his mills and a permanent and profitable investment. From the air, you can look down and see the integration of the modern mill site. Plants for making lumber, pulp, plywood, paper, insulation, presto logs, and all the growing list of new products. Over in the research laboratory, work goes ahead steadily in all phases of wood technology, research and development. Out of the painstaking laboratory work like this comes steady progress toward more complete utilization of each forest crop and the creation. There is a steady improvement in the major product, building materials, better quality, packaging, better identified one building material. There are many new structural ideas, like these engineered wood trusses. And along with all the new developments, we still know the dignity, the enduring beauty of wood panel in our offices and in our homes. After all, wood built America. Four out of five of our homes are built of wood. All of them use wood in some form. We need our forest products for that newspaper and that rayon dress in our homes and schools. Truly there is a new Paul Bunyan in the woods, growing and protecting his future harvests on carefully managed tree farms, making use of the whole of his crop in nearby mills, building a stable, permanent industry, providing continuous, profitable employment for men, and assuring future America of ever more abundant enjoyment of the products of the forest.